Good day everybody, welcome to this challenge video. I've been challenged by Michael Grimm who is an amazing artist who has been challenged by Catherine Dreyer, another amazing artist and uh, Michael also challenged Laura Usher so I will post uh, all the details of their channels in the description below so here we go um, just showing you what I'm doing here and what I'm doing right now is mixing some some powders but before that I was just uh, taping the, um, the cardboardy part of uh, a sticky tape uh, because I need a round shape and you will see shortly why so I need that uh, underneath it so what I've mixed here is just some deep gold some some suncatcher glitter powder from Glitz and Glam Lorez of course and some supernova Glitz and Glam also shimmery powder which is all, uh, like a greenish color uh, so I made sure that my surface is leveled because I want to create some rings and these rings um, they're going to be um, part of the planet you know the rings you, you have around some of the planets they didn't really work out and I think because I fiddled too much with it surprise surprise so as you can see I've got my surface prepared and ready and I'm alternating the gold as well as the glittery um, pigment powders which are very very super transparent and it would have worked out really great if I did it right but I didn't I fiddled too much so they are not moving anywhere they're staying within that uh, cir uh, circle so that was a good idea and um, just going around and adding some more and you can see that the the rings rather um, are not perfectly round so I try to tilt a little bit here and there and then try to fix it a little bit it actually looks a little bit like an eye it's quite cool with that um, glittery pigment powder uh, in the middle of it like a third eye or something looks pretty pretty cool but not what I intended um, with this one now I'm trying to help the circles with my shish kebab stick which is kind of pointy and like a, a really big toothpick um, not really doing the, the, the trick for me so hmm won't be doing it that way and I think in fact I'm 100% sure that's um, because all the pigments that I used are transparent so if I used one solid color it would have been great I should have used the molten gold uh, I, I'm kicking myself for not using the molten gold because that would have looked bloody awesome so what I have here is I just have um, a, a styrofoam ball which I bought in a, like a $2 shop I don't know why they call them a $2 shop nothing in there is $2 seriously it's more like a $5 shop but anyway um, so I've popped half of it in and I've constructed a little gadget here out of uh, one of the paper clips and uh, popped it in there so my dome doesn't move around I'm going to let that set and sit there for a little while until it's um, ready to go and ready to be pulled out of its little mold which the mold worked really really great um, but the colors not quite so you will see um, later on what I do with it I should have cut that bit out I'm just uh, actually edited the whole thing and then <laughs> I accidentally pressed the back button on my phone and it, and it just totally got rid of the whole thing so this is a rushed version surprise surprise so oh, off it goes now what am I doing yes I'm unmolding so I'm taking that tape off off the bottom of it and it's a little bit sticky 
It doesn't worry me. I kind of figured it would be. And it, it's also um, quite matte. I had to cut a little slit there so I can pull it out easier, easier. And it did come out real easy after that. And I'm looking at it now. It looks a bit thick. Um, so I'm trying to pop the, the other part of the planet, which is going to turn into a planet, on the back of it and to see what it would look like. Once again, I should have cut this bit off as well, but um, yeah, the bottom of it looks, it kind of looks very gold, um, transparent gold, and so, uh, what can you do? Anyway, so what I'm doing now is I've um, pulled out a bag full of little testers, I've um, these are all the res pigments that I've tested and uh, popped into uh, silicon mold and then you know pull them out lots you know a long time ago just to to see what they look like and to, to use them in photos for for the shop and the website so I'm arranging them now and I'm picking out some really cool colors that white one there looks like would make a really cool moon and uh, point out some different different colors like a silver planet and they're just so beautiful I just want to use all of them they look so great and I'm so happy that I figured out what to to use them in because they just kind of sit in that plastic bag and uh, doing nothing so I've got a nice purple one. Oh, another little trick is just using the, the a hole cutter and um, just using it on old skins and you can see a shot of my hands there oh boy anywho so yes time to start mixing some colors for the background I had to really speed up this video because uh, it went on for over an hour and a half so some of these areas are double speed and some are four times speed um, it just I just wanted you you don't need to see the whole thing and listen to everything it just it tends to just keep going on and on but there's a lot of details that I've added and um, there was no need for it I've mixed a, a new color here just specifically for this piece and I will mix some more and put them in the shop because it's an awesome color and it will be called the deep space blue it's uh, quite beautiful beautiful blue and I'm also using some pearl white because I didn't want to use the the angel white because the angel white tends to take over and create a lot of cells and I didn't want too many cells in this piece I want it to be quite subtle this color that I'm mixing right now is the purple gold I just wanted the contrast of the blue and the gold against that pearl white and the pearl white is amazing like I use satin white as well but the pearl white is, is something really special especially in these spacey kind of um, paintings just mixing 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 So just showing you how I'm mixing that pearl pigment and getting ready to start. Firstly, um, I'm oh, just before I, I get to that, I have taped the sides of this MDF board. It is an MDF board and I'm pouring some, just very, very thinly, some of the clear resin just because I want some easier you know movement and, and a nice flow of the pigments um, and you need that um, platform underneath to be able to do that otherwise they get stuck on the board I haven't primed the board not because any reason but I'm rushing and I'm being very quick at the start and I'm quite eager to, to start and get onto it because I love a challenge you know and I've um, thought about how I'm gonna do it and I, I've 
winged a lot of it so <laughs> you'll 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 see it turned out pretty cool I think so now what I'm doing is I've got that uh, I believe it's the yes the deep space blue the new color I'm just going around and because it's mixing with that clear resin it looks um, quite uh, transparent but I wasn't worried about it I wanted a darker deeper color and I do achieve that because once I start moving all the rest of the, the resin uh, the pigments um, it will it, it will push those colors into each other and create uh, a nice opaque color so I started with the, the pearl pe uh, pearl white which is a powder pigment and then just alternating with the other colors and doing a puddle pour as you can see because I find that puddle pours work really great if you're using um, a hair dryer to push those pigments and and create some really awesome lacing and uh, as well as you know the cells and that plane flying over I had to let it fly over the, the house a bit <laughs> gets a bit loud uh, but it's it's not that loud I mean they are quite high but um, when you're doing the audios they seem to it seems to amplify everything around me like the crickets I'm sure you can hear the crickets and that motorbike sorry about that can't help it but quite appropriate I think um, doing a space painting and thinking about the retreat in Houston in July that I will be going to so I will be catching a plane quite excited about that but that's um another story so a few puddle pours and then pouring some of that pigment around the puddle pours so now getting that hair dryer my poor hair dryer it's actually a really good brand and i absolutely destroyed it with resin but it works really good because it's quite powerful so i am uh, changing the speeds if I want uh, a more delicate um, effect then I do it on a lower speed it's on like, high heat and lower speed and in some areas I really will hit it with a really high speed to create um, those those really awesome effects where the pigments just flow over each other and create those beautiful cells and, and lacing So I'm just going around now and fixing the edges and um, fixing up a few parts which haven't been covered properly with the pigment. So I'm just thinking about, you know, how I'm going to go about this. So I decided to add a little bit more of that pearl white, just a little swoosh, and exactly like that, and then hit it with some heat and some force and then that worked out really well I'm glad I did that because it opened it up and gave it some more depth as well as a bit of light because it's quite a dark painting and uh, I'm gonna let that one sit and set a little bit so what I'm doing here I just have a silicon mold and I'm pouring in some of the leftover pigments because I want to create little domes uh, for my planets as well as um, just dripping a little bit on the my, my glass board there and then I'll, they will pop off real easy and I'll pop them in the painting as well not all of them but some of them and I'm using some of the drips that I have down there this was a purple one and mixing it with that uh, leftover pearl pigment and creating a beautiful lilac and I did the same with the blue and that created this really gorgeous pearl pale pearl blue oh that's hard to say together pearl pale okay I won't try doing that again so what I'm doing now is just using my finger 
and painting the resin over my styrofoam being very careful now of course I will not torch this or heat it up in any way because it is styrofoam and it'll melt on me and uh, that's not what I want so I'm just uh, kind of rubbing some of the pigment uh, over the dome and letting it sit and it fell down there bugger 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 but I got it up and I fixed it just did a touch up and all done so I'm adding a little bit of that pearl on the side because I figured you know I'm gonna have a darker side on one side and a light on the other and uh, I'm using some of the pigment again to to paint with my finger just going around the other side of the of the planet and it looks really pretty so again shading a little bit and the thing about these styrofoam little balls that you get in craft shops um, they look like a little they've got this pattern on them like a honeycomb kind of pattern and it looks really cool specifically for this kind of design doing a planet because it looks like it you know it gives you those crater kind of looks look and now I think yes I am using my finger I believe I can't see probably in from memory I'm using my finger just to run that blue around the gold as well to tone it down a little bit it was just too golden and um, that's what I did what next yeah just uh, going around with the toothpick and trying to fix the rings a little bit I didn't realize that took so long to just do that <laughs> uh, anywho so I've mixed some of my other colors that I had together with the leftover resin and I thought I might just add a few different uh, different effects in the in the painting a little bit of color there's uh, these are actually going to be a new line of colors and I thought might as well you know, give it a, 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 a whirl in in this um, painting and it actually was a whirl and a swirl because I just swirled a couple of things and created like a little planets and there's different colors there's like a, a greeny shade and an orange red orange shade that went in as well it just gives it something different and the colors really I mean it's showing pretty dark now but it's not it's just the lighting in the in the room so you will see the end product at the end of the video and of course if you're bored with watching this just uh, fast forward just like I did just now because you can see some other things all of a sudden popped up um, it's only because you know it just goes on for a long time I am taking the tape off now so I'm being very very careful and mindful of where this tape is going because it's still quite sticky at this stage and the tape is kind of sticking to my fingers so I'm trying not I'm trying to be real careful so I don't accidentally pull it and um, and kind of drag it over the painting that would be a disaster and we don't want any disasters no so, tape is almost off just about and I tell you what I, I quite like the look of it even just like that but once I start playing with the other little goodies that I will pop on top uh, I actually really enjoy doing this thank you so much Michael I I am so grateful because it just gave me something to do which was different than what I normally do um, you know when I'm doing these resin paintings it's just like wham bam and that's it you know it's just uh, this it made me think it made me study the stars and the planets a little bit and it's not 
going to be a, a real structural kind of space painting so you know it's it's uh, it's not going to be exact it is quite abstract but it did make me think and uh, visualize and imagine how I would want it to to work out so thank you very much I'm I love a challenge you know if somebody tells me do something I will really look into doing something um, different not what I normally do because it is a challenge and uh, I'd like to, to show that I can do something else <laughs> so I am adding those little domes which uh, are all Lares pigments and they've been created quite a while ago when I was testing when I actually first started dealing with uh, the pigment powders um, or the powder pigments whichever way you want to say it so some of them are matte most of them that I'm putting in in this painting are the ones that you can get in the shop that are uh, pearlesque colors or pearlescent um, and uh, they're quite shimmery and shiny and luscious and you know lustrous and they're just yummy so I'm popping them in so I've got like a, a bronze planet and uh, a blue planet and a copper planet and and now I've got some little crumbly bits um, that I've saved from some of the you know um, res rock paste that I've mixed. Res rock is a, a powder compound that artists use. It's it's quite new on the market, and I mixed it a while ago with some water. As you do to create a paste and then it dries up and then I picked it up off the surface and crumbled all the you know I've mixed it obviously with some um, pigments to create that green color and I believe I have uh, some of the shimmery stuff in there as well it's all the res of course don't use anything else but the res um, so I crumbled it up and crumbled some more and I just um, popped them in and there's some of those little confetti that I've cut out of the skins um, and just arranging them around the planets because they're all shimmery as well and they're, they're quite interesting looking they've got different colors on them they're all complementing colors like blues and purples which is what I'm focusing on here so yeah just um, adding here and there and making sure that I don't overdo it because I tend to do that and I just love those little domes I just wanted to cover the whole piece with them all so <laughs> very easy to overdo it so I try to keep keep it down tone it down a little bit you know So, and soon I will be adding some of the gemstones as well because I thought they would look marvelous as like um, little meteorites floating around in space. So I'm adding actually the white ones that you can see there on the on the top right. They are the moonstones. Absolutely amazing, and they glow in the dark a little bit too. I know because I've got some in my my bedroom, and uh, you, you can see them glowing in the dark slightly. You know, you can see they're there, they're not glowing like a light or anything, but they do tend to have that kind of power, if you want to call it. And adding some of the yellow aventurine around that golden planet there, and also I believe that I've got some carnelian chips okay so I've got a little bit of yellow a little bit of orange and a bit of the the moonstone which just look amazing just bit by bit you know just build it up and I, I really hope somebody tries to to do something like this because it's so satisfying you don't have to do a um, you know a space piece you can do just a mosaic or something like that using those little 
things that you can you can create in well, little shapes rather that you can create in the silicon molds so it's it's very very satisfying doing things like this I find so just building this piece slowly and you can see that uh, shadow there where the sun is coming in from from the window out from you know from well obvious it's coming in from outside <laughs> oh god I'm losing it okay so you can see it and you can actually see that beautiful purple and a bit of blue underneath there that's it that's the real color that's what you'll get when you take this piece out into the sunlight it's just amazing sometimes you know it's a real bugger when you're doing things in the studio and you don't have proper lighting or you've got the artificial lighting which doesn't really give you the right color but um, what can you do you just sometimes have to use your imagination alrighty so now I'm thinking of where to place this um, little planet Today, with the uh, rings around uh, Welcome back. It. It's been a couple of days. I've been really busy and I haven't and, had a chance to uh, finish this up. So I do oops, apologize, We're uh, back. So um, I've added a few I've more planets. Just with a so pen. you can see that this orange one. one. That's my Mars. Um, okay. Spray it with a little bit of um, varnish. Spray varnish. Uh, and then, as well, I just want to um, dip this underneath. I know it's quite a different color. done that one afterwards and popped it in. It's quite matte, but it's lovely. And working on my planet to, you know, where to pop it in and looks like I've just popped it in right there it looks all right so now I'm just uh, gonna be working on a little bit of shading so I've just got a little bit of white acrylic paint and doing the just figuring where the light is coming from and kind of um, stippling it with the stipple brush which is really just a makeup brush which I use for stippling, it's absolutely amazing. I'm showing it to you now. Um, and I found that the white was just a bit too too bright, you know, for, for certain things. So I've um, kind of had to use my finger to dab it and get rid of some of the brightness. Now I'm just using the Posca pen and going around some of the cells and um, making sure that um, they pop as well. So I've only got the silver and the the gold Posca pen in this piece, the metallics. That's all I wanted to use in here, and I'm um, just using a brush now well, to really wicked from up there. create a shadow effect because I have a moon up above that planet, and it's shining onto the planet. Now I'm being very mindful as to where where the light will be and where where that. Uh, shade will be so that's what I was trying to, to figure figure out and now I've got my my resin just clear resin ready to do the final stage I was pretty happy at this stage um, about where I placed everything and it just looks looks really really amazing and very 3d and very very textured so just going around with just pouring pretty much the resin over it and then I'm going to be using my fingers to spread it around everywhere and kind of use my fingers to dab around those little gems. Here comes the plane again. Yay, a reminder I will be going to Houston very soon in two months. Woohoo! Okay, so uh, back on track. Um, yeah, using my fingers to dab the resin around the little gemstones to make sure to cover everything. And I can't believe this is the first take of doing the audio and it's going smoothly. I better bite my tongue real quick. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to jinx it or anything. I'm real tired and... I don't think I have the energy to do another one of these, so, yeah. So it's looking good, just rearranging, making sure that I've got the, um, the planet with my rings around it sitting properly and facing the right way, you know, because of those, the, 
the shadows and the highlights just making sure that it, that's all done proper and properly and uh, we're nearly done we're nearly done and you will shortly see some close-ups and I hope I really hope you like this so if you do give give us a the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new and um, you, you know leave a comment oh what am I doing here oh that's right I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of something there and this is really cool because what I did was I just got some of that the powder pigment the pearl white and just kind of placed a little bit on the wet resin and started swirling it around and I tell you what I will do another one of these just focusing on this technique because it worked out beautifully it's only when I started adding uh, the colors to it and started going outwards more that I ruined it but it just says uh, look at it it just looks amazing just just like the, the Milky Way or you know another galaxy it's um it's it's a really cool idea I think um, but like I said I tend to fiddle a lot so I decided I wanted to add some of that deep space blue and some of that uh, purple gold and putting it creating you know the rings around it and it looks good but it's too much there way too much in that spot there so in the end what I did was I just um, used my fingers and I just spread it around everywhere and just created a little bit of shimmer around some of the planets and I also got the, the hair dryer and I really put a lot of force into it to spread it around because I just didn't like the way it looked it was just too much it would look great on its own but there's a lot of other stuff going on so it was just way too much too busy you know even trying to use my pokey thing to you know um, just create the the rings and make it a bit better but no, it didn't didn't work way too much and here you can see that I am spreading it around and getting rid of that there was no need for it and it looks much much more subtle now and that's what I wanted a little bit more of the hair dryer I haven't used uh, the heat gun at all in this piece just the hair dryer and a little bit of a torch just to blow the bubbles and this is it dear friends it's um uh, it's all folks as they say so please um look at Catherine Dreyer's video and uh, go and visit Laura Usher's video as well as Michael Grimm who has challenged me and thank you very much for that and thank you all for watching I really appreciate it I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll give it a go bye for now love you all